while I'm here, I guess I will take the time to clear up something that I said earlier that might be taken the wrong way. And it's about the Grand Square. <laughs> yes, I said there's like, it's like a gentrified hippie thing. Traditionally, no. But nowadays, yes, because it's so popular. And when I think of the type of people who uh, popularize the Granny Square these days, they tend to be more of the hipsters um, who end up living in gentrified areas. Like a spade is a spade, and that's just how it is. But I do believe that the Granny Square is essential. It teaches you many things for crocheting. It teaches you to count stitches. It teaches you to follow a pattern uh, sequence. And it also teaches you how to construct a shape. And after you make your granny square, as long as you make two granny squares, you can patch two together. So it, that teaches you how to show. That, that teaches you how to sew or link the granny squares together. So like it's foundational, it's definitely essential and it's a quick way to do things. Uh, say if you wanna make something homemade and you don't have a lot of time and you still wanna feel a sense of accomplishment, Granny Square is where it's at. However, um, 10 toes down, the, the popular, it's so popular these days, the fact that uh, it's incorporated on the runway. The runway uh, in very popular brands um, or luxury brands tried to overprice something that was like basically more affordable. And yarn, yarn can be expensive these days. Um, but yeah, I just don't like how it's monetized so harshly. And I get everybody's got to make their, their money, but you know, let the small folk the small shops have it. Don't give it to the big corporations. That is like the gentrification that capitalism does, you know. Big fashion brands during uh, fashion week they may debut or during other times they might take a whole African print and flip it in or anybody's cultural prints prints they'll get inspired by it maybe not address it but they'll make a lot whole lot of money behind it and I think that's kind of jacked up because you don't know the essence of what you're dealing with and what it means to those people you just say oh it looks cool and you're getting money from it and that's how I feel about the granny square like I said it's elementary it's foundational to crocheting um and yes there's other ways to learn how to couch count Yes, there's other ways to learn how to count. Yes, there's other ways to recognize patterns, but the Granny Square kind of does it all in a compact way. Um, I'm still not interested in it. I still don't like it. Like, and I think it's cute for like household items, but to wear a whole sweater for it in funky colors, that's just not my cup of tea. It ain't for me, balls. It ain't for me. This is the blanket that was a gift. This is the original blanket that I'm basing my throw off of. But as you can see, my design still falls short by what, like three inches? But like I said, I didn't measure. I literally just eyeballed it and I didn't even have it out flat all the way. I probably had it more like that than like this. So this is the blanket that I'm basing the dimensions off of. I did end up cooking what I said I would. I made beef ribs and my stab pot but i've already unloaded them from the pot and put them in tupperware and i also made cornbread and it's a little dark because i used molasses i had sugar and molasses but the sugar that i use is a uh, like a raw cane sugar which actually has some uh leftover molasses in it because it's like a darker cane sugar but brown sugar is just cane sugar or sugar with molasses added back into it molasses comes out from the extraction process anyway um my tea is cold i'm gonna have to eat it uh, but here's here's the food that i have so far i'm supposed to saute some greens i don't feel like it but i can't just have bread and meat i could 
but that's not good for my body so here is the cornbread darker than normal but like i said i did add molasses to it this time around usually i don't add molasses usually i just do sugar sometimes i add a tincture of honey but i usually don't use more than a fourth a cup of sugar but the molasses i just poured just poured my heart poured with my heart and over here is the beef ribs uh, i got a lot of portion i did use some of the jerk marinade uh this is the jerk seasoning that i used and i also used the sauce version of the marinade and then i added some additional um seasonings fresh garlic fresh chopped onion bell pepper thyme um and some whole peppercorns it is time to taste test the cornbread it's a little dry I was a little dry, but it's perfect because I have a sauce. I have gravy for the beef ribs. So it needs to be dry so it can absorb the gravy. Bye-bye. <laughs> I should have stuck to the plan. It is what it is. Bye. The frogging has commenced. There we go. All right, so I am back where I started here when I made my first vlog. Excuse me. Bless me. I think I lost about 30 inches of crochet. Whatever. It was bugging me. I'll fix it. I'll add it back in. I'll figure out how to add in stitches. Okay. All right, so this is two spools-ish. One spool, actually. I think I had to cut it. And then I stocked this pile here, but I'm going to go ahead and join the blue with the blue. Well, actually, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll figure it out. The easiest thing would be to work with what I already have unraveled, which is part of the green. And... Hey, I can't believe. Well, I believe it. It happened. I I unraveled it all. I yeah. Starting from the beginning. And uh I think I fixed my extra row. My row my stitches that were missing. There's a scraggler there. <laughs> Alright, but you know, I could just if I take my time, I can just add on the blue that's over there but i have to ravel it oh uh, gosh okay you can do this if you end up in this situation as a beginner just keep the keep the keep it loose if you keep the yarn loose it'll be easier to take apart it's like unraveling a necklace except for there's no kinks and coils it's just a bunch of yarn you can do this I got myself into this. I was stubborn and I saw my air, or I saw it fanning out and I thought it would be okay. I thought it was just a weight, but you know what? I'm glad I caught it and I'm feeling a little better about it because I kept lifting it up and looking at it and just feeling like, Ugh. even though it's my blanket, even though it's, it's my first project, even though mistakes happen, like I couldn't let it go on for too long. So hopefully I fixed it. I've just been like, eyeballing it and dropping random stitches and adding stitches randomly and hopefully it'll even out like i've been assessing like every two or so rows i haven't been counting but you know what i, I don't i just got off work not that long ago i don't have the patience to count we we move and we groove we move and we groove this is a learning experience this is a it could have been all avoided if i just brought one of my blankets to work or just bought an extra blanket oh well let's get to it <laughs> my ingenuity ingenuity my i'm being tested like this i've used two water bottles now i'm using a hand sanitizer you know what i have a i have new respect for the girls <laughs> i have new respect for the girls at the yarn store who take their precious time and use their fancy equipment to 
you know, wrap this for me when I purchase yarn. Also, I have respect for everybody else who be doing this at home or whoever got the patience to pull through the middle because right now it's not for me. And as long as the rolling of the yarn is for free at the local store, when I purchase from there, that's what I'll be doing. Now, if I buy my yarn somewhere else, what? <laughs> let me get back to work. I'm at the finish line. All right, so I have all my yarn that I unraveled, all my yarn that I frogged, whatever terminology y'all want to use, all my yarn that I said, if it we, I got it rewrapped around and uh, I am going to commence and... I gotta go to sleep soon, but I'm gonna get started while I can. And I think I'm crocheting faster. Not like I have a deadline for this, cause, but I think I'm crocheting faster just because I was crocheting consistently. I, I think I see my growth. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is my work so far and it's still curving in some, especially on that right side. But you know what? It's it's way better than what it was before. And I'm building it back out as I go. I didn't frog it to completion, uh, but I sure did rip a lot up. Um, and I just decided to play guess and check because after counting over <laughs> like 90, yo, I'm not about to count 90. 90 something stitches like that's gonna take too long and i don't have the patience for that so obviously my my attention was looser down here at the bottom probably should have used a different uh, anyway i'm not even gonna get to that but yeah so basically i've just been doing guess and check so um i've been randomly adding one to two crochets in the middle ish like from here to here I'll add one to two crochets and then I'll fold it against the work and checking by the width that way and and that's it that's I can't ask for much else I think I'm doing way better than when I was before and like I said I believe I'm crocheting faster because it was about 12 30 when I did the initial ripping uh, or frogging of the <laughs> yarn and now I finished one skein and I'm on the second skein again and so that's been about like four hours but I've also stopped to eat and I've been watching Aquaman so you know I'm just trying to chill just trying to chill and move oh um the blue was still wrapped around the sanitizer bottle. This was not enough to finish a row. So I'm going to go back and add this in later. But uh, I am on the sage, the eucalypto, and it is, uh, it's good. Now, the other part of the blanket where the eucalypto first is, I never, I didn't unravel that. I'm completely okay with that mistake. Uh, but that other mistake that I had when I lost those stitches um basically my blanket was looking like an hourglass and um <laughs> i just couldn't it was a little wonky a little ridiculous for me so here we are i'm working on it we gonna get this done we gonna get this done get it done so this is where i'm at right now i'm at my hips from the feet to the hips um I have uh, like two more balls of yarn and yeah, I should be finished with this blanket by tomorrow if I'm serious about it and get it done. Well, I'm, I'm growing, I'm learning not for no reason. and I'm, saying, I'm just here. Okay, so I finished my blanket. I finished it and I think that's all that matters. I finished it. I finished it. All right, it's giving she tried. I tried. I... 
I tried. So obviously, my tension on my yarn changed dramatically. And also, I think I ran into some problems with the blue. Like maybe some of the skeins of yarn were thicker, even though they had the same grade. Um, but yes, yeah, so we are doing like a little tail right here and a little tail in the beginning. Not intentional. And then, let's see. This is the top of the blanket. I was going to make a border, but I just said forget it. And then I think this is by far my best section. This green here. Not many inconsistencies. Even when I had to skip a stitch, it's not as noticeable. Like, and there's a big hole too. When I was doing this blanket, I also learned a different way to skip stitches. So using that for later. Here is the whole section that's like missing the deep ridges. Like, yeah. That was the part that I couldn't like figure out what I was doing wrong. And this is the beginning. My tension was very loose. Um, yeah. And then I also tried to start making a hat, but I ran out of yarn. So I was even gonna try and make like the colors do something different or like do alternating stripes, but obviously I ran out of yarn. I didn't count my green. What's that thing called? Yarn chicken? Whatever. So it's just gonna be unique, just like this blanket is. But it's my first project and I'm done. I need to get some more yarn to finish this hat because I don't have enough. But, you know, I think what's important for me is that I make the yarn fails into yarn forgiveness. So even if I mess up a project, I'm going to see if I can make a way to make it functional. Yeah. And I've already started on something new and I already got a big mistake because it doesn't fit. But... <laughs> I'm on my way into making it something functional. So y'all will see next time, next episode of Crochet and Chill. <laughs> Bye.